Are you interested in the Capital One card ecosystem but don't know how they compare versus all of the other travel cards? There's a new kid on the block and the Capital One cards have come out swinging. In the next five minutes, we'll go into the Capital One ecosystem and how we're thinking about using it versus all of the other travel cards that we have. You're the new kid on the block. Is the Capital One Bifecta right for you? There's a couple questions you want to ask yourself going back to our flow chart to understand if the Capital One Bifecta is good for you. The first question you want to ask yourself is, are you willing to optimize or do you just not care about optimizing at all? If you don't care about optimizing and don't want to think, you're either going to go with the City Double Cash Back if you're looking for cash back and don't want to travel, or you'll go with the Chase Sapphire Reserve if you care for travel. And we recommend this one over the City and the Capital One because the Chase Sapphire Reserve has a better travel portal and you get 1.5x for all of your points to use within the portal. Now if you are willing to optimize then you're going to ask yourself again do you care for travel or not? Again here if you don't care for travel you'll go ahead and go with the city trifecta but if you do care for travel this is when it gets interesting. It depends on how often you travel but Capital One is going to fit into your needs pretty well because it offers some benefits and ease of use right out of the gate. How does the Capital One compare to the wealth of other competition out there? With the Bifecta you're going to have one of the lower entries into the gross annual fee that you'll have to pay to be able to get the benefits. Capital One is also going to be your simplest path to travel perks. Because it's on the lower side of the annual fees, you'll be able to break even more easily. Stick around to the end of the video where we'll do a deep dive into how Capital One compares against Chase, American Express, and City. Benefits to you. Now what cards make up the Capital One Bifecta? The first card is going to be the Capital One Venture X. The second card will be the Capital One Saver, and you'll also need to decide if you want to keep the Capital One Saver or if you want to stick with the Saver One. The main difference being is that the Saver gives you 300 cash bonus up front but costs a $95 annual fee, while the Saver One has no annual fee but gives you $200 cash back, as well as only 3% on dining, entertainment, and popular streaming services, where the Saver Rewards gives you 4% cash back on dining, entertainment, and popular streaming services. To complete this bifecta, you only need need two of these cards. I recommend starting off with the Venture X and the Saver Rewards card. Then over time you can downgrade to the Saver 1. Sign up bonuses. With the Venture X, they'll currently give you 75,000 bonus miles when you spend 4,000 on purchases within the first three months. With the Saver Rewards card, you'll get 300 cash bonus once you spend 3,000 on purchases within the first three months after account opening. With the Saver 1, you get the lesser amount which is $200 cash back once you spend $500 on purchases within the first three months. If you go with the Venture X, and saver combo that's going to give you a combination of $1,050 cash bonus after you do all of the minimum spend. That's a good amount of cash bonus and miles for you to spend on the luxury travel that you want. Not only will you get the sign up bonuses, you'll also get travel perks within each of the cards. So let's go into them. Capital One Venture X Benefits. The Venture X is going to be one of the most simple ways to get travel perks because how quickly you can break even on it. As mentioned, not only will you get that $750 up front as a sign up bonus, each year you also get $100 worth of miles and $300 annual travel credit. With the annual fee being $395, just with that annual credit and anniversary bonus alone, you'll come out ahead as that's $400 total in benefits versus the $395 that you have to pay for an annual fee. You'll also get $100 to use towards TSA PreCheck or Global Entry. You'll get access to one of the many Capital One lounges. And one of the benefits that stands out the most is you'll get access to the partner lounge network such as Priority Pass and Plaza Premium Group as well. That benefit is super powerful because with each card holder, you're gonna get access for yourself and a guest, but the Venture X allows you to add additional card holders for free. So each one of these additional card holders will be able to get their own priority pass for themselves and for a guest as well. None of the other travel rewards cards out there offer this perk right now because you'll have to pay for the additional card holders or the additional access for members. There's also the other well-known perks of no foreign transaction fees and cell phone protection. Saver or Saver 1 benefits. With the Saver series, you won't get as many travel benefits, but you'll unlock some of the usual benefits that you'll expect from travel cards. This includes things like the no foreign transaction fees, complimentary concierge service, extended warranty on some purchases, travel assistant services on a 24-hour basis, travel accident insurance, and other perks that will help you with your travel and how you spend your points. Let's go into how Capital One's Bifecta earns reward points. I've updated the previous chart 
from my previous video and a couple of things stand out as far as how Capital One differentiates itself and the benefits to you. With flights, you're just gonna get 2X back on all flights using the Venture X. With hotels, you'll also receive 2X, which is just okay. But with dining, this is when it starts standing out. You can get 4X with the Saver or 3X with the Saver 1. Again, I recommend just going with the Saver. With groceries, you can get 3X with both the Saver or the Saver 1. With gas, you'll get 2X on all purchases with the Venture X. And then the floor rate of 2X back with all purchases from the Venture X really makes this a simple setup to use. There are some key pieces that I wanna call out, which is the entertainment and streaming services categories. Depending on if you get the Saver versus the Saver 1, you're going to get either 3X or 4X back. With the Saver, you'll get the 4X. With the Saver 1, you'll get the 3X back. This really stands out for people who spend a lot of money on entertainment. For us, for example, we do spend a lot of money on entertainment and streaming services. So getting that extra 4X back is gonna be a big benefit for us. Versus the other credit card reward setups, this really doubles down on entertainment and streaming. So what does entertainment mean? If you go to the Capital One website, it shows that entertainment counts as purchases made at movie theaters, sports promotion events, promoters, amusement parks, tourist attractions, aquariums, zoos, dance halls, record stores, pool halls, or bowling alleys. It excludes golf courses and college sporting events and non-industry entertainment codes. This covers a wide variety of things that you do for entertainment. For us, for example, we go to movie theaters a lot and also go to theme parks, so getting that 4X back is going to be a big benefit for us. What counts as streaming? On the website, Capital One lists out the popular streaming services that will earn that 3 to 4X cash back. This includes Netflix, Hulu, Disney+, Plus, other services such as Prime Video and other on-demand. Easiest way to get started. You're going to want to start off by getting the Venture X Rewards card, which then gives you all of those travel perks. You'll then start working towards earning that 75,000 bonus miles by spending the $4,000 on the card within the first three months of opening. This will allow you to start traveling and getting all of the perks, as well as working your way towards breaking even. After you get the perks and the sign-up bonus, you're going to want to decide do you want the saver or the saver one. To make this decision, it really comes down to do you spend extra on dining, entertainment, and popular streaming services. If you spend enough to make up for that $95 bonus, then it's worth it and you should go after the saver. And if you don't, you should go with the saver one. Another key consideration is that you get the $300 bonus with the saver versus the $200 bonus with the saver one. It does require you to spend 3000 on the first three months with the saver versus only spending $500 in the first three months with the saver one. Now let's sum it all up with the Capital One ecosystem versus the Chase. Amex and City ecosystems. With the Capital One, you're gonna have a gross annual fee that falls somewhere in the lower end or mid-lower end at $395. As far as benefits, you'll have the simplest path to get the travel perks, and you'll be able to share those travel perks with your family and friends by adding them on as authorized users. It is the easiest system to break even annually, and that really makes it stand out because it makes it simple for those who don't want to care too much about optimizing. It's going to be best for those vacationers who take somewhat frequent vacations and want to get the benefits of lounges and the additional travel perks. What it's not good for is if you want to maximize earns as far as travel rewards goes. You're going to be better off with something like the Chase ecosystem, which gives you higher earns on flights and hotels and more optionality with what I believe is better travel partners. For now, because we like the Chase ecosystem more, as far as what travel partners we can transfer the points over, we're going to stick with the Chase, but the Capital One definitely stands out and I'd recommend that to people who have larger families and want to get those benefits that they can share more quickly with people. What worked for us? As mentioned before, we're definitely going to stick with other travel rewards programs for now, but there's definitely a use case of when the Capital One system makes the most sense. For instance, with my uncle who currently uses the Chase Sapphire Reserve, he doesn't think that it's worth it and he wants to cancel it. This is because he can't make up the break even on an annual basis to justify paying that annual fee. Now with the Capital One, because you get those credits and that annual bonus, you automatically break even and come out ahead $5 and you still get access to those travel perks such as the lounges. I'm gonna have him switch over and use that because he can get the benefits without having to worry how to optimize. So for you, it really comes down to, again, how much do you wanna optimize? How much do you wanna spend time on this and what types of benefits you care about to reach your Goals. Watch this video next where we show you more tips we learn the hard way to live a life of luxury for less so you don't have to.